I am Harper. I am an AI expert. I have about 10 years of experience in AI and machine learning. I have two degrees from Stanford in computer science focusing in AI. I was at Facebook and then Meta for about four years where I was building machine learning systems. And then I was founding engineer at a startup with the two founders and I started teaching AI ML there and I was making coding guides for fine tuning models. So actually changing the parameters of the model based on data. So it involves code, et cetera. And then that company was acquired by NVIDIA. And now I teach AI and I started this about a year ago on Instagram. So expanding from the coding guides. So I'm so glad that you're here and I'm really excited to start this Q and A series. Open source models are models where the code is readily available for you online. So you can literally take that model and host it on your own machine. So when you run it, you are actually just keeping it in a closed loop. You're not sending it out to another company's servers, another company's computers. They're not like, they're not the intermediary when you use an open source model and host on your own machine. There are indeed companies that host open source models for you like Grok where you don't have to set up the code yourself. They will host the models on their servers. But when you send your data to them, they, like OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, save your data, unless they are very explicit about it, like Grok. So the benefit of hosting your own AI model is that you get to keep your data safe and secure. The only issue is that it can be kind of difficult to implement. However, there are tools like Olama that make running AI models on your laptop easier than ever. So if you have an AI PC, like Dell's AI PC, which has an NPU built in, or if you have an Apple computer with an M1 chip or M2 processor, those chips can run AI models. Can they run huge AI models? No, their compute is not large enough to handle some of the larger AI models. However, as I said, something like Olama, which is an app that you can download onto your, say, Apple laptop, you can basically write a couple lines of code and then it will download models to your device. I think there might be some kind of user interface now, but there are apps like that where it's, everything is just local on your device and it allows you to download models, open source models locally, and it makes it really easy. And so then you can work on your computer. The negative is that those models are not very large. And as a result, they're not very good often. So one of the things that you can kind of think of as a heuristic is that the bigger the model, the better it tends to do across all kinds of tasks. And yeah, so as a result, if you're just running it on your laptop and you're able to download a whole model on your laptop and run it, it is either going to be very slow or you won't be able to run it at all if it's like a moderately sized model. So I'm talking about like bigger than 7 billion parameters. Even 7 billion might be difficult on a laptop. And when we talk about parameters, we're talking about like, you know, if you hear of open source models, you hear like Llama 70B, you know, Llama 7B, Mistral 7B. That's how many parameters, that number at the end is how many parameters are in the model. And the parameters are kind of like the number of neurons in the model's brain. And if you have more neurons, you can basically hold more data in those neurons. Like when I say data, I mean like more information, like the model's brain is more complex. It can encompass more of the world. And yeah, as a result, bigger models tend to do better, at least with these models that are trying to capture everything in them. One of the interesting things about these foundational models, so foundational models are models that just hold everything in them. So like they're like Llama or ChatGPT or Anthropic, they're just like models that are large language models specifically and large language models are models that output text. So large language models are text generation models and they can be augmented with the ability to search the web, but at their core, large language models are text generation models. Foundation models are these text generation models that are really good and they cover everything. And they're trained on all the internet from all, yeah, all the data from the internet, basically. So all these foundational models encompass basically all text from the internet. That's what we mean when we say foundation models. So on this topic of foundation models, I'm mentioning this because I think some companies and some people use these massive models when they don't need to. And so there's actually a lot of cost saving potential. And so here's what I mean by that. So 
If you have a very specific task, say you are classifying emails as scams or not scams. So people are emailing you and trying to steal money from you via various different types of scams. I'm sure you've gotten one of those emails before. You could use a very expensive massive model that is a PhD in thousands of different topics and knows about all of the world and knows everything basically, this massive super brain, or you could have a very specified model for that. Why pay for, these, for this massive super brain for such a narrow task? I mean, the issue is that with scams in particular is that it's this cat and mouse game, and I've made videos on this before with deep fakes, but like the issue with when you're dealing with like adversary adversaries, like scammers, like bad people, once you determine how to find them, they will adapt so that the features that you use to find them are no longer features that you can use. So with scams, it's like a little bit more nuanced, but with specific tasks, if you have a very narrow task that you have to do, why pay for a model that knows everything when you can literally just have a very specific AI model do it for you and do that one task for you? And then, you know, you could argue, and especially if you have data. And you can also, another thing here is if you have a data set but it's not big enough, you can use, you can create synthetic data. So given the examples you have, a model can kind of learn the distribution of what that data looks like, how the words, you know, it learns the distribution, given your examples, it can find the distribution of what those words look like and output new data that is similar to the data that it saw. And also you could use the super brain for that, right? Like if you want to temporarily use one of these massive foundation models to generate like a really compelling scam email or a data set of thousands of them, go ahead and then you're done. That is a set fixed cost, that is a sunk cost. And then you get to shift and move towards using open source models and fine tuning a narrow specific use case for your model. So the benefit of this is one, it doesn't need to be a massive model. So we talked about how you need really complex compute for some of these massive models because it needs more memory to hold. If it has you know 400 billion parameters, it's going to perform very well. It's gonna be a model that knows all about the world and can do a lot of tasks. But you don't need that if you have this one specific task and the brain can be 100% focused on that. You don't need 400 billion parameters. 400 billion parameters encompass the entire universe of possible things that it could do. So think about what a tiny scale, what a tiny fraction of that you need to accomplish one specific task. So then you can fine tune this model. You can have your data samples. You can, and we, you should learn about data. I have a video, 10 days of AI basics on data and pre-processing and making sure that you know you have the right balance of your classes, et cetera. So if you wanna fine tune a model, I have a lot of resources for you here and also comment if you're interested in fine tuning a model. I want to know, but yeah. So I recommend in a lot of cases, fine tuning a model and having a very specialized model for your use case because then you are free from having to pay for these massive super brain models that you don't need. And someone could argue, you know, there's when a new model comes out, you lose the ability to, you know, if you have a fine-tuned model and a new model comes out, like a new foundational model, then you you have to re-fine-tune. Like it's fine-tuning as a process doesn't just transfer over. You would have to fully fine-tune the next model when it comes out. But what I would say to that is like, again, okay, yeah, the model does a little bit better, the super brain model, but is it better at the specific task that I have fine-tuned my model to do? I don't know. If it is, and it's an open source model and I can fine tune it, then maybe I, maybe it's worth fine tuning again. And again, as I said, in the case of scam detection, it's this adversarial situation where, you know, they're going to keep adapting. So you would have to kind of frequently update your model, frequently kind of tweak the parameters, fine tune, add more examples. But in a lot of cases, you don't have to have this constant updating. And like, if it has a specific task and this task isn't constantly changing. I mean, you can expect that you're going to have to adapt your model over time. And, you know, you can, there's some heuristics that you can have to kind of trigger when you should fine tune your model again. For example, if, you know, you find that the model is not doing well based on its interaction with users, if the accuracy starts to go down, or maybe you just have a time based trigger where like every six months you want to fine tune it again, that kind of thing. So you will need to adapt the model over time. But again, I really think that fine tuning narrow AI is such a way that people can save money and use like less 
intense compute for their specific tasks. But if you're doing something like just working with a large language model, like if you have a chat bot or something and you want this kind of jack of all trades model, then yeah, of course, using a foundational model and using the best foundational model available as in the largest number of parameters typically tends to do very well.